As a trained economist, I was taught that economics was the most important thing in life. You could use economics to answer any question you had, even what toilet paper you bought or who to marry. As a matter of fact, with just the right incentives and unfettered markets, our economic system would produce all those things that our society needs to be, to have produced, such as what's produced, you've all seen this in principles, uh, what's produced, how it's produced, who produces it, who gets paid for it, and how it's distributed. It was, free markets were touted as a utopia. If we leave them alone, they would produce the land of milk and honey. And as a result, and being a hardcore neoclassical economist, what I thought was is that it would be good for the ideal if any government regulation that moved us towards that ideal was better than any government regulation that moved us away from that ideal. And then we had the boom and the bust of the housing market. We had the resultant recession, the Great Recession, really depression, Great Recession of 2008, which isn't quite over yet. And my, my, my belief in the free market system started to falter. Maybe moves towards more regulated markets is a good thing. I was raised as, um, in Muncie, Indiana. For those of you who don't know what Muncie, Indiana is, it's the all-American city in Middletown, USA. Graduated from Muncie Central High School, class in 1965. There was politics all around me. If you weren't part of the solution, you were part of the problem. I spent my college years dishing out baked beans and hot dogs for Senator Bush Bay. I can still remember the theme. I really believed that you should be involved in the political system. I voted in every election since I was 18, except for the day my brother died, November 4th, 2000. I really believe that people had a voice and that your voice counted. I believe that everybody had a vote and their vote should count. But then I witnessed the Chicago riots at the Democratic National Convention in 1968. I was working in the Watergate, the summer of the Watergate break-ins. I saw the rollout of the AIDS quilt in 1984, and then it became real apparent to me that not everybody's voice was being heard. And if it was being heard, it wasn't being listened to. And to make matters worse, state legislatures, even Congress today, are gerrymandering districts so that only an incumbent could possibly get elected. And to make matters worse, the Supreme Court just gave U.S. corporations personhood. You and I are individuals just like J.C. Penney. Sometimes I think we focus too much on the political and the economics and forget the power that we have as individuals with our morals and values. I was raised Catholic. The nuns taught me that let your conscience be your guide. I learned to recite the Baltimore Catechism. But as I grew older, I, I began to realize there was no place for women in the church. There still isn't. And as life threw me different opportunities, I realized that there was no place for queer folk either in the church. There still isn't. But Christ led a life that taught us how to be. He was a great teacher. 
he went around the countryside with 12 men and a, and a woman. That's how my elementary school memory works. Looking for the outcast, the sick, the poor, trying to make their lives a little better. Pope Francis seems to be reclaiming some of the teachings of Christ. We'll see. At least he's not preaching hate. So here are my questions that you need to think about. Can a free market exist without a democracy? Can a democracy exist without a free, without a free market? And can free markets and democracy exist without a virtuous society? Or put a little differently, can free markets produce all the bounty that they're supposed to if people really don't make economic decisions based on greed and self-interest? Can the political system that we have, can it survive with corporate takeover? Are we free? Are those who represent us free to vote their conscience, to do the right thing? And I guess this is something that's, that's really been on my mind lately, is can we be virtuous in an unregulated free market? Can we be virtuous in a political system that seems to be stacked against us? Queer theory has taught me to be a little wiser in my thinking, to think deeper, to look at definitions. We as people are complex human beings with a multitude of identities layered one on top of the other. The societies that we live in are equally complex with a multitude of histories and locations. Yet we live in systems. Systems affect systems. Systems affect us. We affect systems. Nobody lives in isolation in outer space except for maybe George Clooney and gravity. <laughs> These systems can balance each other. If one of them moves too far to the extremes, and extreme doesn't mean margin, if one of them moves too far to the extremes, the other two can bring them back into line. So there's a precarious balance. What would my balanced systems look like? First, you would have ethical economic actors acting with compassion in free markets that are regulated for fair play. You would have a system where, a political system where the checks and balances doesn't mean personal checks or funneled corporate contributions. The power would come from the people, and this is most important for you, the people would be fully engaged, would be educated, and would vote. And each of those votes would count. In terms of a society, when I get crazy, I think about a global family where everybody can grow up and be whatever that is in a safe environment without judgment. There are no ins and outs. My utopia would have all of these perfectly overlap, but we know they don't. I lost the last slide. But here's what should be up there. 
we know those systems don't overlap. How much they overlap depends on us. We created them. The overlap is really important because it mitigates the evils of these systems. It mitigates the pulling apart where we lead these fragmented lives. As a matter of fact, it can even kill us the way it's pulling us apart. And if you don't believe systems are important, ask Mother Earth. Thank you.